and welcome back. It is the second episode of Tech Spurts. My name is Peyton and I got... My name is Daniel Roberts. I'm sports chief editor at the East Carolinian. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. And this is the show, Second Take. I like that name, man. Hey, let's get it in then. Anyway, we're going to fly right into ECU football. It's a big weekend. It's family weekend this weekend against uh, Old Dominion. Oh, yeah. They come off the huge upset of Virginia Tech, but we'll get into that a little bit later. The Pirates coming off of that unfortunate loss at USF. What were your thoughts on the game? Thoughts on the game, ECU was just a little bit careless, you know, and at the same time, I think they were a little bit overly confident from the blowout win against UNC. Back on September 8th when ECU blew out UNC 41-19 after 20-0 second half outburst, but the offense seemed to be a little rusty, I guess, because of the hurricane postponing. Well, they've been in Florida for like a week. Yeah, I mean, I mean... Like two weeks. They hadn't even been to school. They didn't come to school those three days. Like, I know people that stayed in Florida with a team and, and didn't do anything because, I mean, they were just camping out until they played USF. But, yeah, I still... It's still the offense, though. Like, defense... Defensively, ECU football has definitely excelled, like, a whole lot more than what they did last year. Oh, that was awesome. That was such a, like... For a loss, like, that was a great loss. That was a fun game to watch. Like, the fan in me enjoyed watching that game because ECU's defense, I mean, it was it was a lot different than watching them last year. They definitely did not play, like, the worst defense in all of Division One FBS football last year. Like, that game against USF, they held them quite a bit. And it honestly, it only come down to just a couple plays. USF had those two huge uh, long scoring touchdown plays the one that come in the second quarter on the 66-yard pass, and then the the one that eventually iced the game in the fourth quarter, the 80-yard touchdown run. I mean, outside of that, ECU, I mean, defensively played incredible. I mean, just looking at, if you look at the stats from that game, they basically held USF to 181 passing yards and only 115 rushing yards. And while ECU had like 256 passing yards and 156 rushing yards. It's like this ball club has definitely turned things around despite what the record says. Even though they're one and two, the two losses came like down to the last minute. Yeah, well, it's unfortunate that we had that first loss to begin with. I mean, it was kind of, kind of poor game planning, I think, in the end of it. I mean, that last play was, was atrocious. But the USF game... I thought it come down to to the offense. They didn't they didn't really perform. They didn't take advantage of a lot of plays. Reed, I mean, Reed Herring didn't do he did not do bad. I thought he I thought he did pretty good. He got hurt at one point in the game. But when they bring Ailers into the game, I wish they gave him a little bit more freedom because when he comes into the game, it's going to be pretty much just three plays, and he's normally always running it. And whenever you bring him in to do that, the defense ain't stupid. I mean, they will know what you're going to do and adjust to that. So I wish I wish we could see Ailers have a little bit more maybe passing opportunities because he is a good quarterback. So maybe that's... maybe in the upcoming future he'll definitely get more playing time as a result of his excellent play because he was responsible for the only touchdown ECU scored against USF anyways when he rushed for forty eight yards. Yeah, I mean he's we got a great duo in quarterbacks. I do like Reed Herring, but I really like Ailers. We got a great duo that goes back and forth um, at the quarterback position. On from the USF loss, we move to this week's opponent, Old Dominion, and they had the most absolutely biggest upset so far of the college football season. I mean, they beat Virginia Tech. Now, it was at home. It was at Old Dominion, which I think is a very weird game to have for to, to have Virginia Tech come to your school because, I mean, Old Dominion, they're a Conference USA team. They're they're not a big school. The football program is not very big. It's not even been around long, I don't think. It's not been around but just a few years. But already a D1 school. They were a great FCS school. But, yeah, what are your thoughts on I mean, they they, they kill them. I mean. It, it just, the whole game basically put a whole lot of things into perspective, basically saying that, like, if you're playing a ranked opponent and, say, you haven't won a game or 
you're at the bottom of, of your division or the bottom of your conference, that anything can happen, pretty much. And the Virginia Tech defense really collapsed in the fourth quarter. Like, how do yeah. you, you got off score 28 to 7? Like, really? I mean, it was a comeback win for sure, but I mean, they, they kind of embarrassed them in the end. I mean, Old Dominion, they just kept scoring on them. They made Virginia Tech's defense look very vulnerable. And also the fact that, I mean, ODU had their quarterback, Blake LaRusso. He's a backup, too. Backup quarterback? Yeah, that's a backup. How? He's a backup QB. He's not their starter. But he had, like, almost 500 passing yards. Well, Old Dominion's a great passing school. I mean, they had Taylor Heineke, who's uh, with the Panthers now. And I remember, I mean, he was just a great passing quarterback. He had, like, he broke the FCS record for passing yards in a game. But, Yeah. I mean, he went 30 for 47 on passes, while the two Virginia Tech quarterbacks combined for 17 for 34. Like, really? But I'm kind of surprised with that 30 for 47. I mean, that's 17 passing attempts that that did not work. Normally, I mean, when you make plays like that, it leads to a lot of turnovers. When you when you pass a lot like that, you do you do um, increase your chances of committing turnovers. But I mean, they just absolutely embarrassed Virginia Tech's defense and. Yeah, I mean, Virginia Tech was not supposed to lose that game. 13th team in the nation. That was supposed to be a cupcake. And I, I love that we beat, well, that Old Dominion beat Virginia Tech because, I mean, we were supposed to play Virginia Tech and they were just talking so much trash about us not going over the hurricane. So, yeah, I lo- I'd love I love that they kind of rubbed it in their face and then I'd love to beat Old Dominion. But at the same time, though, you got to keep in mind, though, that if ECU was to play Virginia Tech, we would have been on Virginia Tech's home field, which basically... I would say guarantee a real whooping. Just like Virginia Tech has a great, you know, home field advantage in Blacksburg. That's a great um, atmosphere for college football. But I mean, they lose to Old Dominion. Old Dominion lost to Liberty, fifty-two to ten. That's just <laughs> fifty-two to ten. Not, not you know, a three-point loss. Not a, not a ten-point loss. I mean, that's a that's that's a loss by six touchdowns. That is absolutely ridiculous. So, how, however they pulled it off, whatever the coach told Old Dominion when they were playing Virginia Tech entering that fourth quarter, it absolutely worked because they just shocked everybody in Hokie Nation. And, I mean, as you even run through Old Dominion, as you run through their uh, schedule, their past scores, first off, Virginia Tech was first one of the year for them. They hadn't won a game until then. That was their first one of the season against number 13, Virginia Tech. They lost. They lost to Liberty, who was a second-year FBS school. They lost at Liberty, though, but still, that's a second-year FBS school, and they lost 52 to 10. That is absolutely embarrassing. Then they go play at home against FIU, Florida International, who is a pretty respectable Conference USA opponent. They lose 28 to 10 and 28 to 20. Excuse me, in that one. I mean, once again, that's just you know that was that was I guess just a close game. Then they go to Charlotte, who is terrible. UNC Charlotte. Mm. Absolutely awful. They went one and eleven last year. You said who? UNC Charlotte. Who are they again? Forty ers Charlotte. Man, uh, yeah, one and eleven. And they lost twenty eight to twenty five that game to Charlotte. So, ooh, yeah, mm. that's absolutely terrible. But you know what? That, uh, beating Virginia Tech definitely will give Old Dominion some confidence moving forward. But you know what though? This upcoming weekend, though, ECU and ODU. Yeah, ODU might be a little confident entering in that game, but I I don't see them coming out with a victory. I mean, I don't see Old Dominion coming into Dowdy and getting a victory. No, I feel like it's family weekend. I mean, this Dowdy will be packed, just as packed as it was for UNC. Family weekend's always a big deal. Virginia Tech, they were our family weekend last year. That was a terrible pick for family weekend, but... Uh, yeah. You know, okay. But you know what though? This year though, they're gonna rewrite. They're gonna rewrite history. They're gonna turn things around. And I don't. I wouldn't say it's gonna be like a blowout like UNC. I because like you said, ODU is a good passing team. I personally see it coming down to the wire. I see ECU defeating Old Dominion by by a little bit more. I see that they are favored by six and a half points, but I see ECU winning by a little bit more than that. I d- one thing about ECU that has kind of surprised me this year, we actually do kind of have a running game. Like, we actually do kind of have a running game. 
Penix, I thought Penix, when he when he could get open, I thought he was doing great. When Anthony Scott had a few good runs, I mean, you let him get a little bit of daylight and he's gone. I, the run game is kind of also like the defense this year, a pleasant surprise because normally running has not been an ECU strong point. And it's, it's, good, to, it's good to see them kind of getting that. But there's one thing that we seem to forget that talking about ECU's defense, especially against UNC that I saw, was that they struggled to defend the running game and to have the ECU-USF game come down to an 80-yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter that basically iced the game. It, I, I don't know. It's, well, I mean, you say iced the game. It did happen. When it happened, I mean, there was like – 10 minutes left on the clock. ECU did have ample opportunity and time to try to come back from that. But the offense, it was predictable. That's the thing. They're going to have to change up the offense. It's a little too predictable. When Herring's in the game, you can pretty much bet it's a pass. When Ehlers is in the game, you can pretty much bet it's a QB run. I mean, it's it's very predictable. And that's going to be something ECU really needs to work on if they want to get past Old Dominion, I, I think. Or get past anyone in that matter, but for this week, Old Dominion. But recent history, though, between ECU and ODU, they've only played one other time, and that was back in 2013. And ECU and Greenville pulled off the win and actually won 52-38, to which I thought was very interesting. So it's like, is that something that's going to happen again, or perhaps can it be worse? Well, like you said, yeah, ECU does lead the se- – they've only met one time, like you said. ECU won that game. 52 to 38, and that was in Greenville. 2013, that was Old Dominion's first year coming into um, FB, FBS football after a few years of really dominating at the FCS level. Never quite won an FCS championship, but definitely had some great players that are currently in the league. I mean, that is a great game for a brand new FBS team to come in and, and get close like that, 52 to 38. I don't think Old Dominion is necessarily that good enough. To, to come in here and maybe reduplicate that because, I mean, it, it's not like just this year they've been not exactly the best by losing 52-10, to 28-20, and 28-25. I mean, they've been, they've been kind of slumping and slacking for the past two, three years now. So, I mean, it's a lot of their players are, are ones that have been there and been through that. And, I mean, they didn't improve from back then, and they haven't improved since. I mean, I – I don't see them coming into Dowdy Ficklin and getting a win like that. I'd say basically for families coming in, you know, alumni, maybe graduate students, everybody, that if they wanted to come out to see a good game, perhaps see another ECU win besides UNC, this would definitely be the weekend to do it. Yes, this is easily the best family weekend game they could have picked. I definitely see this as a win. Do you happen to have like a score you got in mind? My score, my score prediction. I I would go with. I'm gonna say 35 to 21. I don't think the ECU offense will put up as much numbers as they did against UNC, and I really don't see a second half shutout personally, especially if they get into field goal range, but. I don't know. I say 35-21. Well, I mean, with Old Dominion, they did beat Virginia Tech, but they allowed 35 points. That shows me. I mean, to me, when a team scores 35 points at any level of football, 35 points, you should be winning that game. You should win. So I kind of view that as Old Dominion also doesn't really have a defense either. So if ECU can really take advantage of that and not be too predictable on the offensive side. I see ECU winning. I see them hanging at least 42. I see – I see it 45 to 45 21. I feel like would be a pretty respectable score. ECU definitely getting the victory. But we'll find out this upcoming weekend, though, definitely if ECU can get their second win of the year, especially after going three and nine the past couple of seasons. And I mean, yeah, like like you said, it would be good to get up to two and two. And I see this ECU team honestly, they're on the come up. They really are. This is a, this, we have a good team this year. So, yeah. Well, that is going to conclude this Texperts Episode 2 Second Take with Peyton and Daniel. Appreciate you coming in, man. Man, appreciate you for having me. Yes, sir. We'll be back here in a few weeks, I'm sure, won't we? Absolutely. Thank you all for watching.